Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make high-end looks for less with some amazing decor dupes. Last week when I was at Savers with Sammy, I came across this beautiful Fortnum and Mason biscuit jar. I looked it up when I got home. It retails for almost $50. Mine didn't have the lid, but that doesn't matter. Fill it with floral or some beautiful spoons. Sue wrapped it up for $26.95 on my website Saturday morning on my live haul. Now let's dupe this decor look for less. So this one is nothing too crazy special, just made in China, but I don't find a lot of just white basic crocs, so I think I'm going to grab that one as well. I gave this basic croc a cleaning with some Windex and decided to add a beautiful transfer by the redesign with Prima Line. This is the classic vintage labels. I looked through all these beautiful designs and picked one that I thought kind of resembled my Fortnum and Mason jar. Then I'll remove the paper backing and add my transfer onto my white crock where I want it. Once it's pressed down, I'll take the rubbing tool and begin to rub over my design. That will release the transfer from the plastic and get it to adhere to my crock. Then I carefully start to release the plastic off of the crock, making sure that my entire transfer is pressed down. If it seems to lift at all, I just go over that area a bit more with my rubbing tool. Since I am selling this crock, I want to go ahead and seal the transfer up a bit. I've got Sweet Pickens top coat and final finishes. This is the matte clear coat. A little artist brush over the design and this crock is ready to go. It cost me around six dollars five to six dollars opposed to the 46.95 fortnum and mason biscuit jar drop me a comment let me know what you think of my first dupe to purchase any of the paint products or my flips today, you can head over to upcycledbybree.com. I'll be sure to drop all the links you need down in the description box below as well. This next dupe is a beautiful antique chippy corbel. They sell usually for over $100 each online for a decent size set. And I know that we can dupe this look for way less. I found this pair of shelf corbels at the thrift store. Yellow tag was 50% off that day, so I actually only paid $3 for the set. But as you see, they are brand new in the package still, so it's time to rough them up a bit. I'm using a razor, a blade here, and a hammer to just give them a more distressed finish. Now it's time for the fun part. I've grabbed my DIY Dark and Decrepit and I'm going to give them one good coat over the entire surface. Make sure you stir this product up before you use it. Since it has that built-in top coat, it can settle a bit. That first time it didn't get a very dark coverage. So I stirred it and reapplied over both corbels. Before I do any painting, I'm going to apply Sweet Pickens Crackle Medium. This is like a glue-like thick product that you can apply over your final coat of paint and it will provide that antique crackle finish. If you spread a thin coat, you'll get a smaller crackle. If you make your coat thicker, you'll get a big, thick crackle. Now I'm going in with DIY cake batter, this beautiful muted yellow, and mixing it in with some salt wash. Y'all, if you haven't tried salt wash, it's a thickening agent that makes your paint thick and delicious. My friend Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs has it available on her website. I will drop it down in the link below. Now I apologize, while I was painting the yellow, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. But I just slapped on one light coat with a chip brush and you can see that amazing crackle coming through. I used the crackle medium even though it wasn't my final coat of paint. I'm going to be going in with this O Olive Milk Paint. Milk Paint is a powdered paint. You mix it one to one ratio with warm water. I put my water in first, 
then my paint powder. I give it a good stir for a couple minutes and then I let the product sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to thicken up. It should be the consistency of a melted milkshake. Now I'm going on with some clear beeswax by the Sweet Pickens. If you're wondering why I'm waxing before I paint, it's because I want to cause a resist. The areas where I'm putting the wax, the paint is not going to stick as well. It's going to chip and flake off in those areas. Once my milk paint has had a chance to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to apply one even coat with a Klingon brush. I like using my Klingons with this paint. You just pop it in a glass of water overnight, and when you go to wash your brush in the morning, this milk paint will just fall out of the bristles. And that's great because milk paint can be a little trickier to get out of your brush than the DIY paint. I'm covering the entire corbel front back and the sides with the green paint just in case somebody wants to use these as bookends or a display piece in a vignette. Then I start drying my paint up with a heat gun. This is going to force some crackling. If you've not done this before, be careful because if you use too much heat, your paint will all just end up falling off. Now, after all those steps, I let them sit and cool for a minute, walk away, I went and do a chore, and when I come back, y'all look at this after effect. I am getting big chunks and chips going down to the raw wood, which is what I was wanting. You can see a little of the yellow. You can see some of that crackle. I think these came out absolutely gorgeous. And for about five or six dollars, I have this beautiful antique finish compared to the over $100 price point of some of these corbels that I see. Let me know if you think I nailed this high-end look for less. I was really inspired by these anthropology cloche. I love the natural look of them, but for $60 to $90, price was a little steep, and I know we can dupe the look for less. I love to pick up these bases at the thrift store when I find them for an expensive price. They're great for projects like candlesticks, risers, and in this case, a base for cloche. I found this gorgeous cloche top at the thrift store when I was shopping with Sammy. It was only $1.98 purple tag that day. I re-gifted the tree bottom since that tree would not come off of the base. And voila, now I've got the perfect marriage. There was a little leftover glue residue from the felt that fell off, so I am just sanding it off, and then I'm going to hit this with a coat of DIY Dark and Decrepit just to help that wood blend in a little bit better now that I've sanded it. Yes, there is still a Sharpie E on here. I'm going to be keeping this project for myself, so no worries to me if it's perfect. When people put Sharpie in wood, it really sinks down into that wood grain, so I would have had to sand that down quite a bit. Uh, to get it off and I just wasn't too worried about it. If I was reselling this, maybe I would have used a coat of paint or something to hide that permanent marker. I'll be building my display inside the cloche off of this piece of cardboard. I thought about cutting a little piece of wood, but I figured I'll be switching this out a lot, so a piece of cardboard will work for now. Reuse, recycle. I cut a few of these little styrofoam balls in half and I am going to glue them on to the cardboard. That's going to help create a little bit of a mound for my Spanish moss. And I'm using a combination of moss, using just a little tiny bit of the green moss and some of the brown Spanish moss. These, um, I got the moss from Dollar Tree and then the big bag of Spanish moss from an estate sale, so very inexpensive. I tucked a little of the green moss in first and then covered it with the brown moss. I just wanted a little of that green to poke through, not very much. And I just take my time and work my way around, making sure I have everything covered. I grabbed a branch from the yard off the ground and a few pieces of dried floral from my stash. I'm using scissors to make a hole down into the styrofoam and gently placing my dried floral in. I give my cloche a quick spray with some glass cleaner and this dupe is done. 
I spent around $4 for the base and the cloche. I had everything else in my stash. So let's say $5 to $6 for this high-end dupe compared to that $60 to $90 price tag. Again, I am keeping this one, but this would be a very easy project to make at home. All you have to do is hunt for your supplies at the thrift store. Please drop me a comment and let me know which one of today's projects is your favorite. If you loved today's dupe video, be sure to thumbs up and comment down below. Love the dupes, more dupes please, something along those lines so I know and I can continue to bring you the content that you love. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and follow and send this video over to a friend who hasn't discovered all these wonderful decor dupes that can help save them a ton of money on their home decor. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends.